Emeritus Professor and Addiction Expert from the University of Otago. Doug Salmon has been working in the... Professor Doug Salmon has been working in the addiction treatment field since 1985 and part of Alcohol Addiction New Zealand. And he joins me now. Doug, good afternoon. Hi, Leah. Thanks for your time. Now, uh, first of all, what, what do you make of what Mike King has said regarding alcohol not being a problem for people with mental health issues. It's actually the solution to our problem. Yes, I, um, I've i reflected on this um, a little since hearing that because it was quite shocking. And a friend of mine said, well, remember that Mike is a comedian. But yeah. I, uh, uh, he wasn't actually saying it as a joke. He, he was being serious. And I think what he was really trying to say is that it's a pseudo-solution. Right. But occasionally uh, for some people with with difficult suicidal thoughts a distractant like alcohol intoxication can be useful but I think it's a very unhelpful comment to make publicly because there is no doubt that alcohol contributes to to serious clinical depression and Mm. completed suicide it's a major factor so you think he was he was more referring to his experience, you know, when he was tra- taking a lot of when he was al- an alcoholic and 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 taking drugs. He was more kind of reflecting. Do you think? Yes, totally. And and in fact, I know Mike, and I um, he he was he was a great supporter of mine uh, over ten years ago when I was giving a national tour on ten things the alcohol industry won't tell you about alcohol. And I really appreciated his support at the time, but I, I did detect at that time he sees the whole issue of alcohol and mental health through the eyes of an individual who's had these problems himself mm. rather than really looking at it from a public health perspective. And those two perspectives are quite different. And, and I think that's what's getting mixed up in the public debate at the moment. Gosh, that's a really that's a really good explanation, Doug, of what's happened. He, yeah, he's not looking it through. Yes, I mean this is where see people are, are coming obviously to his defence and saying he's he's doing he's done and is doing such a great job. Others are saying he should step down he, he, or, or at least pull back. You know, he's obviously got something he shouldn't have said it, but but you've nailed it. I think he's look he's looking at it through different eyes, his eyes, not. Yes. The, the best of the public health eyes. Yes, and and clinically, you know, there's no doubt that alcohol is a depressant. Mm. It's a depressant drug which contributes to clinical depression and it's an aggressogen. It, it causes aggression and it's a, a disinhibiting drug. So aggression and disinhibition leads to completed suicide if alcohol wasn't present, there are suicides that would not occur if they had not been alcohol intoxicated at, at the time. And there is another clinical aspect that I, it's worth mentioning. Sure. Alcohol is more dangerous from a, a drug overdose than most people realise. It depresses respiration. And so yes. there's, a, there's a lot of accidental poisoning poisoning from alcohol, particularly in relation to other drugs, but alcohol itself uh, causes death through poisoning. So this is actually, well, well, my next question was, Doug, and I think you've answered kind of most of it, was like what are the psychoneurological effects of large doses of fre- or frequent doses of alcohol on the brain? And you've just mentioned, uh, well, respiratory failure. Yeah. What else? What else can it do? Well, it's, it, it, I'll just repeat it again. It's a depressant. It causes mood depression. It makes people more aggressive than they would normally be. It's an ad- a disin- disinhibiting drug, so people do stupid things that they later regret, and it has that depression on respiration, on breathing. But but Doug, how come like that's not for everyone? Because you know I you know I've known people. I like I like a tipple. I like wine, but it doesn't make everybody violent. It doesn't make everybody, um, sadly, you know, well not. It doesn't make people suicidal. So why would it affect certain people more than others? Yes, well, there is a lot of individual variability, but in everyone, it has. Some of those aspects, 
Uh, I, I should say that uh, I enjoy uh, a glass of wine from time to time, and I enjoy that dis- that short term disinhibition euphoria that comes. You know, and mm. I've, I've said before, it makes me feel like a, a wonderful person living in a beautiful world. It's a <laughs> it's a, a la la land that you 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 go into with intoxication, but that but that. That if you're going to take drugs, you've got to get the dose right. And the people for whom these more dark effects are occurring are people who yeah. are who are drink who are taking ten times the dose of probably yeah. you and me. Sure. Is there, Doug? Uh, do you, is there stigma to alcoholism? Is it is it seen by some people as not a true addiction? And it's like, oh, just stop drinking. What are you What are you doing? Um, I think there is a, a, a lot of stigma um, in mental health generally, uh, and that includes addiction. And I think one of the great values of people like Mike King is that he's helping us as a society realise that good people can get these mental health and addiction problems. And it's not any fault of their own. There are forces outside their conscious will that have got mm. them into that state of a compulsive habit, and and that is essentially what a what an addiction is. Yeah, 